My name is Theresa McKinnon at Warwick Language on Twitter. Um, I've worked in language education for some years and until recently I was the chair of the Computer Mediated Communication Special Interest Group for like Eurocall. To, to give you perhaps a more nuanced idea of what a webinar is um, and perhaps introduce you to the term virtual exchange. Very often a webinar is really just an online broadcast. It may be used um, to provide online access to um, a lecture, for example. But this type of use of the technology is kind of limited. It assumes that the information is neutral and that just by making it available, you are doing something useful. And that's fine, but limited. Another version of the same sort of thing is the small group meeting that's sometimes known as a conference call. So perhaps using an online technology in order to um, convene a meeting where the participants are geographically distant and you just really want to get everybody to share their experiences, perhaps from slightly different contexts. Once we started to engage in the technology, we started to realize the shortcomings. And it's at this point really where computer mediated communication as a field can actually um, help to improve our understanding of what this sort of technology can be used for and how it can be used. So let's have a look at um, one way in which the freely available technologies have been used um, in informal settings uh, because this experimentation has led to um, a greater appreciation of the value of webinars. So people using things like FaceTime or um, uh, Skype perhaps to connect to each other in order to keep in touch with the family when they're working away or perhaps people using Periscope to share um, something of an event that they're experiencing with a wider audience. We've learned through these sort of interactions that actually there's quite a, an important emotional distance that's being closed by use of these sorts of video technologies online. Um, we've also found out a lot of practitioners have experimented in this space um, found out ways of using this perhaps to address um, specific problems so the example i've given you there is the virtually connecting blog that's uh, mahabali and um, uh, her collaborators really a, a sort of virtual network of volunteers who um, use this sort of technology in order to open the doors of conferences to those people who perhaps cannot physically attend either for reasons of budget or for whatever restraints they have. More sort of extended use of these sorts of technologies comes through what you might call an online classroom. Um, and this is really understanding that the technologies we've been appropriating so far for in an educational context tend to be business, con business um, tools and they're geared towards a particular way of looking at interaction that perhaps doesn't really help us as educationalists because we want full interaction and participation. Um, so we need more tools within our online space uh, that allow some sorts of interaction that perhaps hadn't been considered before. Um, so the tool I'm using here, which is Blackboard Collaborate Ultra, um, uh, there are other tools as well, tools such as Zoom, have um, affordances that allow us to address the participatory element of um, interaction online. So in teaching, it's important that we increase 
the presence of all the individuals involved, that they have the ability to contribute and participate fully and to interact. So there are more channels available for communication um, within something like an online classroom. It's possible to organize breakout rooms in order to, to subdivide um, the audience and give them the opportunity to interact with each other. Um, it's important as well that we address specifically some accessibility issues. We may require captioning. We may require um, file formats to be non-proprietary in order to make sure that everybody can participate. Um, we may want a low bandwidth, which can be quite demanding but very important for access in some parts of the world um, and mobile technologies can be important so we see the increased use here of um, open source tools such as webrtc in order to ensure that uh, participation is accessible and open to all um, we've also got greater flexibility of roles so I may be a presenter at one moment, but I may hand that over. I can use the interactive whiteboard to collect information and use polling tools in order to get a better image of how people are responding to the discussion topic and things like emoticons as well are very helpful. So the input really here from the field of computer mediated communication has been to help to inform us about the barriers to successful use of online spaces um, and that means that we've ended up really with a clearer definition of what it is to use these online spaces for interaction. Virtual exchange is kind of an umbrella term. You'll, you'll come across uh, virtual exchange sometimes referred to as online intercultural exchange or OIE, uh, telecollaboration. The Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange Initiative also recognises the skills that are developed through virtual exchange using open badges. 